I, I got the pleasure of having trainer extraordinaire Mike Van Wick. What's happening, man? <laughs> extraordinaire. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, tell me about it's always, it. It's always funny to hear like how people introduce you. It's just, yeah. <laughs> well, just a big guy that lifts weights. <laughs> I, I, from what I understand, you're a lot more than that. From what I understand, you've become one hell of a trainer. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got a lot of a lot of good people to work with, so it's more yeah. of them than me. You, you think know. so? I don't know, man. I, I, from mm-hmm. what I from from what I gather, uh, people are starting to come to you, and uh, you know, people go to Chris Aceto and Milos. Uh, you know what I mean? So if people are starting to come to you and seek you out. Then that means you're you're doing something right. Yeah, I mean, I've like I said, I've been blessed with having good people to work with. Like Antoine really got me known just because he, that was the first person I kind of worked with and worked with him intensively. And then I got the pleasure of working with Regan and guys like Quentin and a handful of other people, Cody, like different people that have just come, come in my, come across my path and I've helped them as with whatever I hopefully I've helped them with. And it's just kind of parlayed into like me being on the, my YouTube channel and just my, my desire is to help, to help more people, like on a broader spectrum, just like mm-hmm. get better at, at lifting and kind of fixing what they're already doing and getting them on a, a better path to like maybe feeling things better or just getting more out of their own workouts. Right. Cause I think that's the biggest thing is just teaching people that like, you got to empower yourself to get yourself better. You can't always rely on mm-hmm. someone to like hold your hand through the whole process. Right. So sure, sure. At, at some time you need that obviously you need someone to kind of show you where where you need to go and kind of what you're doing wrong but you should also be at the same time like any good coach be helping that person when they're not with you that you've made an impact and like change the way they move or change the way they lift right so well i mean that that's definitely a sign of um a good coach because you know on a very very small level i competed right in the npc in the states nothing big and i had you know some coaches and uh the better ones always kind of became more of a friend it was more of a personal relationship right even you 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 respected them as a coach but at the same time they kind of you can go there's one particular one i I can go to even to this day if i have a problem you know yeah and then i've had coaches where it's just like yeah do a b and c and i'll see you next week (laughs) i don't i don't want to i don't want to be that guy that's why a lot of like the more the more that I've gotten notoriety or any type of just being known, like I've had a lot of people reach out to me and they're they want to buy a program, which I I appreciate that and like I could easily do that, but it's at the same time it's like I'm not giving you what what I want to give to you. So mm-hmm. it's like you could there's a million programs out there. There's great programs by like old John Meadows programs. There's Juji has good programs. All kinds of people have great programs that they sell mm-hmm. people and, and there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that my forte or my area of where I really want to make an impact is on how you do things. So it's mm-hmm. hard for me to it's not necessarily like do this with this and this and that superset or that triple set or whatever you want to call it. That's the difference. It's nothing right. to do with that. Like has everything to do with like how I would want, how I would want to see you do that movement or those three movements. Like I need to see how you do it. I don't care how this other guy did it or how Regan did it or how Antoine did it. Cause it's completely different as to how you might have maybe the same mechanic, mechanical issues going on. Maybe you're not thinking, maybe you guys are, aren't making the same mistakes, let's say, but it's still going to be completely different for you because mm-hmm there's different little things. Maybe you're not arched enough. Maybe your feet aren't dug into the ground enough. Maybe you're the weight's not back on your shoulders. It should be more on your hips. Like just little things like that, that make a big difference that I can't see unless I watch you do it. So I can't make a recommendation because that could be a horrible, these, these two, this is a superset could be horrible for you because Mm -hmm. the second exercise in the superset is something you really struggle with because you just, whether it's like maybe your ankle mobility or your, the something's an issue with your shoulder, but it's pressing thing. It could be, there could be a better option. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas people are gonna be like, Oh, I did a Van Wick, Mike Van Wick super set. And it was like, Oh, it was awesome. Like his training. It's like, yeah, but you weren't doing it the way I would have you do it. It's the mm-hmm. most effective for you. And you could be piling on too much weight and that could be an issue as well. Right. Whereas I might have, I might strip you down to maybe barely anything of what you're used to doing just mm-hmm. so that we get the mechanics right. And we get like the, 
like where you're moving from first, right? So we, then we can start putting weight back on or doing different things where like the poundage is going up, right? But we need to break you down to the fundamentals and then see where you're at and then think about where we're going from there, right? So just giving people programs is like, I don't know. I don't so, feel right about it. So every single one of your clients is more of an interpersonal, like you, you are there with them in the gym? Yeah, I mean, the, the people that I think I, I feel, hopefully I've helped the most are the ones that I've been hands-on with the most. So like when I first started training Antoine, I was training Antoine every day of the week. Okay. And so it's prep for the... Uh, yeah. So for those of you, to, to, for, the, for the people that are listening and don't know who Antoine is, Antoine Valiant, right? Yeah. A and he is a tremendous IFBB professional uh, bodybuilder. He probably would have been even better. He just came across battling some demons and then he cleaned himself up and then he got injured. It was just kind of bad luck. But yeah. as, as far as uh, quality, uh, the guy is a phenom. He's a phenom as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He has a great X frame, you know, tremendous amount of muscle. He's, you know, was he over, he's well over yeah. 300 pounds, right? No, right now he's like 280 something, 290. Okay. But yeah. And, and he's got, <laughs> Just to and be technical. He, yeah. yeah. And the guy, and the guy's got a 30 inch waist, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I think he, I think Antoine's going to shock a lot of people this year at the next time he competes. I think people will be really surprised as to what well, they're going to see. Two years ago, he, he did, you know, when he was healthy and he competed, he, he won California, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was a layoff for years that he had some issues with, uh, with drugs and homelessness and he got his act back together and he was doing much better. And, you know, his character is a testament to his character of uh, what he was able to overcome and uh, get yeah. back on stage and win, you know? So yeah, uh, yeah I, I, think, I, I think he's probably going to do well too. And just, you know, yeah, the improvements that he's made, like, from like, hopefully like I've, I've put some, put some ideas in his head and got him like I see him when he trains by himself that he's moving the way in a more freer motion. He'll even tell me like I'm every chest workout is a good chest workout now. And like, he's starting to really connect with his back a lot better, like on his own. Right. Cause he's understood mm -hmm. that he has to kind of take what's been given to him. Cause he's had a lot of great trainers work with him. Not just like, it's not just me who influenced him. Like he worked with meadows. He worked with all kinds of people. And he mm -hmm. also had his own style that he, now he's just kind of like amalgamated that into like, this is what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And we, we come, we bounce ideas back and forth off each other, but he kind of does his own thing now and just takes with what I've showed him and what after other great people have showed him. And he's kind of made it like his own thing. And mm -hmm. the and progress he's making guys like him and guys like Quentin, there's no, there's no limit to what these guys can do. Right. It's just a matter of like empowering them and teaching them how to move properly and getting them to like, really grind out just the consistency and it's like the sky's the limit for all those guys. It's crazy. So as far as the elite bodybuilders in Canada, you've trained Antoine and you still train yeah. him, right? Yeah. On and off. We did actually okay. the legs today. So, so. Oh, okay. that was pretty cool. Uh, Regan. <laughs> like, like he needs help with fucking legs, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> I know really it's just unbelievable. Regan Grimes, who is now with Milos, right? Yep. I was training Regan, uh, last year leading into his, leading to Olympia, like we train a couple times a week. And then he would kind of, he would come in and out because he, he also was splitting kind of time between here and London, Ontario, which is pretty decent drive. And he had his own, like, even with Regan, like Regan, it's great that he's found Milos and like that he's got this rapport with Milos and this like consistency and someone to be on him and like kind of walk him through. Cause Milos mm -hmm. is a great pro. Milos is a great guy. Right. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's great that he's had, he has that kind of, he's found that kind of like piece where he fits. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So he's, there's a sky's the limit for him, but like, honest to God, like he's another guy who's worked with countless trainers and countless, like he's been to Kuwait. He's worked with those yes, people. So it's yeah, like, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of inventory of knowledge mm -hmm. that he can compile into like, now it's like, okay, well, Milos is now going to harness that mm -hmm. and like do what Milos does right for him. So it's like, He's, it's like, I mean, like when people say, oh, so-and-so is with so-and-so now, like if someone's like, oh, so-and-so is with Mike now, it's like, but I'm, you're just a, you're also a product of all these people that came before me. And you're also a product of yourself from the stuff you've taught yourself. It's not like it just wiped the slate clean and oh, Mike, Mike is responsible for this guy or Milos is responsible or Patrick Tour is responsible. Like, no, like. There's a journey that led up to the point when you meet, when you're working with this person now and all that stuff before still counts. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You can't just discount it. Right. And right, say right. that this guy took me, this guy made me what I am. It's like, no, man, there's hours of lifting. There's thousands of sets mm-hmm. that happen before this moment, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And all, and if you didn't do all that, you wouldn't be where you are now to have someone take you and elevate you a bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I don't, that's why I don't think people are making a big stink about Regan going with Milos and this and that. And there was like all this controversy. It's like, no, like, cause Regan had a lot of people influence him prior to Milos and all that stuff still with him as well. Right. Whether it's, yeah, well, it's, it's helped. Yeah. It's not like he was a shithead. He's still, you know, top 10. No, it's, I mean, world, that's, you know? that's the thing is like, if Regan went with, if Regan went with like, let's say person X instead of Milos, like he's mm-hmm. still going to be Regan. Right. right, that's, right, right that's right. those, that genetic and that ability and that gift and talent is in that person. Yeah. I didn't, that didn't get brought out by one person. Right. right, right like, right. Oh, Chris Aceto brought the best out of him. Like, well, no, Chris Aceto worked with him at this point, And then he worked with another person and he worked with Dorian Dorian brought the best that he brought out of him so far. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like another step to, Let's see what he does with Milos. And I think they'll do fantastic. I think oh, they're yeah. going to kill it. They, well, you can see already. I mean, the last few shows that he did, uh, yep. it was it's night and day. I feel like, well, you know, um, Milos, I don't know what, you know, it's like he is one of those modern trainers where you could see, you almost, you could see a, s- a tremendous difference on stage. And I think it's all conditioning. Uh, yeah. Um, well, that's the di- that is the difference that that people don't understand. Like the degrees of conditioning, curate an illusion of a physique that's maybe bigger or mm. or like fuller, rounder, because the person committed themselves. And and Milos, I feel like I don't know Milos personally, but I've interviewed him and I've and I've been a big fan of him for a long time. It's like I think he pulls the best out of people, and I think he has a has a knack of like. Like people see when people work with someone that they see has done it before mm-hmm. and at a high, high level. Cause Milos was great, man. Like I was a huge fan of Milos growing up. Like not even, not just his, not his work he's done with people. I'm talking about him, his, his bodybuilding, like yeah, his, 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 physique, his physique, his physique and his posing and his like attention to detail yeah. and how meticulous he was. And he knew the sport in and out. Like yeah. that all gets transferred to now the person that he's working with and he mm-hmm. instills that in them. So mm-hmm. of course they're going to get better. Why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. They'd have to be a moron not to get better. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like they, then, they literally have to be a moron. And then the people like, that leave him, you could actually see when Max Charles left him. I don't know what the falling out was, but you saw a yeah. tremendous difference, you know, the other way when Max Charles left him, all of a sudden he's dropping. I think, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just a matter of like, it's like Max Charles leaving him, Regan joining him. It's just like maybe like your journey, your journey with each person, like any relationship in life, whether it could be a boyfriend or a girlfriend, some people, their journey starts with that person and ends with that person. Whereas mm-hmm. a lot of people, a lot of us, like we meet another person, we meet That's another right. person yeah, and yeah. it all influences you to becoming the person you are. Right. So right, right. these are all necessary pieces that have to happen. And like, I hope for Regan's sake and Milos' sake or anybody's sake who joins a new coach that like, it's always the best for them because mm-hmm. it should be. And yeah. like you, 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 that, that next person should be the best person because you're smart enough to recognize like, I need this right now. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah no, absolutely. And, I, and any great, just, any great athlete kind of has to recognize when you've kind of drawn all the info out of this person and you kind of need to go. Yeah, elsewhere. And, that's, and yeah. for some reason, and for some reason in bodybuilding, it's become this big controversy. Like yeah. everybody, Oh, the so-and-so is so-and-so now it's like, yeah, but like if you went up if you went up to that person and you spoke to them one on one and didn't have this like facade of bodybuilding around, they probably tell you, yeah, like I really I really learned a lot from this guy and I really took a lot from this guy and now I'm just like now I just happen to be going in this direction. But mm-hmm. it's not like fuck that guy and fuck that guy. This guy didn't know what the fuck he it's like no, it's not no, no, but no, that, no, that's no. how that's how they portray it, right? Like it's nothing to do with that. Like I tell my guys all the time, like if you if they are like I don't they don't train with me every day. I don't train my guys every day. And Mm -hmm. at one point I did. And then things kind of happen where guys are doing shows or I'm away from, because I'm working on my other job. I'm not around. So it's like, I just hope that what I instill in them are like little things, like maybe little cues I give them or little like tips I give them with like their head, head placement or hand placement or where they're starting from. And I, and it's like nice for me to see because I'll be working out in the gym by myself and I'll see them train and I'll notice like their movement is, exactly what i want them what i would want them to do so i'm mm-hmm. like oh maybe it, it clicked for them right mm-hmm. so it's like that's a that's a win for me mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. not like oh like i gotta you gotta only listen to me and 
you can only do what I tell you to do. And my style is the only style. Like these trainers that get like that, they get all uppity and they start bad mouthing other trainers and yeah, they no, start like, so cool. like making little sly comments or fucking this and that. It's like yeah, everybody's which is, style which is, is very, work. which is very sad in the world of bodybuilding. Yeah. It's very sad because I've been a hardcore bodybuilding fan since I'm 15 years old. And yeah. there is, there is such I don't know what's the word caddy bitterness among people in bodybuilding that it's kind of yeah, sad. Body, bodybuilding has become like for a lack of a better term, and I don't mean to insult females, but it's become a bitch sport. It really has. It's become, and I, and I, that, I hate about the word bitch, I hate it. The word bitch isn't a reference to like females. It's like, it's, no, it's, it's a way of thinking and a way of acting. It's very yeah. like on fucking, there's no integrity in it. There's I no mean, fucking I, like, I've been in the gyms where like, you know, I've been in like a privately owned gyms, where the owner of the gym is talking shit about one of the members working out 10 feet in front of him. You know, and it's like, dude, like, really? Like, really? You know what I mean? Um, it, just, it just becomes catty and stupid and ridiculous. Because if you go into, like, uh, other kind of sports, it's not nearly as bad. I mean, you get, you get some. Don't get me wrong. There's old drama, but... Bodybuilding is really dramatic. All right. Anyway, um, I think I think I think ahead. within bodybuilding though, it's just a matter of like it's such a there's so much there's nothing going on. Do you know what I mean like in other sports there's there's all kinds of shit swirling around like mm -hmm. whether it's baseball or boxing or like there's all this other stuff that goes into it mm -hmm. and there's like practice there's this there's treatment there's rehab like there's all these things that encompass you playing this you doing this sport which is an active sport of like performing uh, like activities right mm -hmm. whereas in bodybuilding it's like we're in the gym and then we go home and a lot of guys don't do jack shit else yeah especially nowadays uh, especially nowadays apparently no one has a fucking job anymore other yeah. than filming themselves at the gym That's, and yeah. it's like i can remember when i was coming up like i didn't i didn't have social media wasn't as prevalent so there wasn't the ability to like get a sponsorship or get all these brand deals based on you had all these people following you yeah. And it's like, you are valuable because of your, your reach. Right. Yeah. Whereas now it's just like these guys, like they hope they, they just all of a sudden get some notoriety and it's just like, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to take my couple thousand bucks a month from this supplement company or a thousand bucks from this like energy drink or whatever it might be, these different sponsors. And you're just going to like be happy with that. And it's, but yeah. then there's also the other guys who are at the end of the spectrum, they have millions of followers. They're fucking, YouTube money, right. brand deals, sponsorships. Like I understand that like, you don't, I wouldn't want to work either. I'm good. But it's like the average guy who's trying to come up, especially these guys that not, aren't at that level yet. Like it's like, you better have a fucking backup plan, dude. Seriously. Or like another, I, you better have a fucking job or a skill or a trade or something to do. hundred percent. The odds of you becoming something in bodybuilding, like unless you're like next level genetics, right. like, right. It's like, it's not going to happen, man. Yeah, absolutely. Unless they're noticing you at the teen nationals. But, uh, you know, John, John De La Rosa was an elevator mechanic for many years before he became a professional bodybuilder, you know? And, um, yeah. and no, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. wholeheartedly. Um, do you think that there is a particular personality type that is, that is attracted to bodybuilding? So more of a selfish, self-centered, all about me kind of attitude. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can. Or do you think it's see, like, or do you think it's somebody is attracted to that and then be, they become that? I th yeah, I think there's, I think there's more than more than a couple personality types that get into bodybuilding, but I can only, I've only really recognized like a handful. So there is that person who's like very into themselves and very, but like I don't think it's necessarily. I'm sure there's people who are on the narcissistic side of that, where like they're very self-involved and like, oh, my appearance and this and that. I'm sure that's that is a personality. I think there's also like the introverted people who are just like, I don't like this idea of team sports. I'm not really into like necessarily playing sports, but I like to like be lift weights and be muscular and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm more of like introverted. That's why I think you saw in like the, the nineties and you still see it now, but like this, like this mentality with these guys who come in like with their hoods up and they're like covered and they're like, you know, they're very intense and like music's on, like, don't fucking talk to me. I think there's like that kind of personality where like these guys are right. just like they yeah they live but then that's fucking great man and like and they they live to just like be in the moment of in the gym and lifting weights and it's not about like 
oh, I'm, I've got the best body. And it's just like, it's a self-improvement type thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of guys that have like, there's also this hybrid of like the kind of that guy who cried, like, and I think, I think that's what I was. Whereas I did play a lot of sports. And then I also found when I played those sports, I enjoyed the lifting aspect more than I enjoyed playing the sport. Mm-hmm. So I knew as soon as I was done playing football, I was going into bodybuilding. I knew it. I nice. like, I had it planned out. Like I had no, I had offers, <clears throat> I had coaches when I played football in Rhode Island who told me my senior year, oh, CFL teams are asking for tape on you. Not because I was like some hot commodity. It's just because like CFL teams signed the rights to Canadian players in the States for a CFL draft. And they basically draft you and own the rights to you if you decide to come to the CFL and play. Really? So they were like, they're like, yo, do you want us to send them tape? And I was like, fuck no. Right. Like, one, I don't want to play football anymore. Two, I'm not good enough to continue to keep playing football. And three, my body won't allow it even if I was good enough because I was beat up, man. Like, I had a lot of problems, right? Yeah, I can only so imagine it's like, that's a rough way to make a living. Yeah, no, I was, I was just playing in college, right? But I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like, I just played three, four years in college, and my body feels like I got hit by a fucking tank. You know what I mean? And I had like shoulder issues, ankle issues, like all kinds of shit. So I was like, and I, I used to love lifting and like off season more than I liked playing football. Like I used to love like in the winter, like us all lifting together, like maxes, like max squat, max bench, all that stuff. So I was like, man, and I was into bodybuilding since I was a teenager. Cause I followed like flex magazine. I was like, I love Dorian and Ronnie and flex all these that guys. Was the right? same, that's the same story that guy Sistanino told me that basically he was yeah. playing football and he just fell in love with lifting weights. Yeah. Yeah. I love Like I love the, I like, I lift, I started lifting weights cause I really enjoyed it. And then I realized like lifting weights and being bigger would help me in like any sport I wanted to play. So I played rugby when I first started playing sports and then I got into football and then I got a football scholarship, mm-hmm. but I was like super into like, I literally like, all in college bought like every flex magazine. I was like, I knew everything about like every show that was going on, like top guys. And I always knew like when this is over, like I'm going into that. Like I, yeah. I didn't realize it wasn't going to like make me any money. <laughs> I, was, like, yeah, well, I don't think, any, I, you know, I, th- I think that's the case. I think everybody who hits the gym and they just look at the top 10 guys in the world and they go, Oh, well, wow. They got, he's Jack. He's got all the hot girls. He makes money. But the truth of the matter is it's not, not really much, much like that. Now, as far no, as your bodybuilding, especially the hot, especially the hot girl part. <laughs> tell me about it. That's for sure. Yeah, it ain't no, the hot girls looking at you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's the guys looking at you. The hot girls are the headaches. Holy shit! Yeah. Um, yeah. So you turn you turn pro in two thousand nine. Yeah. Right. That, um, yeah, at the Canadian and, Nationals. And you did uh, one pro show. I did two. I did the did New two. York Pro, the New York right. Pro in two thousand ten, right. and then I did the Toronto Pro in two thousand eleven. But I didn't. I wouldn't. I didn't finish the two thousand eleven Toronto Pro because I ended up in the hospital that, after yeah. prejudging. Yes. Oh, oh, I didn't even think you made it that far. Okay. So you had food poisoning, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I don't know what the exact issue was, but the food I ate did fuck my stomach up. And then I was just a mess after that. So up in 2010, you came in 13th in the New York pro who won that show. Yeah. Whatever, whatever second to dead last was is the place I came. <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> who won that show. Rolly yeah. did Rolly. Well, all right. I mean, you know, you're talking about one of the, one of the best ever. You know? <laughs> no, I was actually, I was talking about this with, uh, I think, Dennis and a couple other guys. Like, that was, like, seeing him at that show and, like, being backstage of, like, him and, like, Dennis Wolf did the show. Yeah. A couple other big names. It was just, like, to see, like, because I was the type of person, like, even when I played sports, I wanted to, like, see what the best was and, and be against it and mm-hmm. know, like, even if I'm going to get my ass kicked, I don't give a fuck. I want to see what it is. So I visually know and mentally know where I need to go mm-hmm. to, in order to like try and get to that level. And just to see the quality of like the density of muscle and like the, how much muscle was packed on those frames, even Roly at the time being as small as he ever was probably yeah. in a, on a pro stage yeah. was like the most impressive thing. Cause that guy was conditioned like, his face was so sunken. I swear to God, it was like I could. It's like you could. If there was a thinner cheek, you would just see his teeth through it. Uh, yeah. Well, like, that's when he was, was working. He was working with Grandma at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. And she was backstage, just like I remember. I was, I was laying on the ground, kind of relaxing near them, and they were like, he was kind of warming up or whatever, and he was asking her for water because he was like chewing his own mouth, like he's like, oh wow. And she was like, no. 
And he was like, <laughs> like I could tell he was like begging her. Like she was like, no, no. And like I think she might have given him like an ice cube or something. But like fuck, he was like, I was like in my mind, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm definitely not ready for this. But it's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She was old school, man. You know, she well. It, um, and then he went to uh, Iraq, and that's all she wrote. Yeah. Um, He's a monster. Yeah. Now, as far as your career, what made you pack it in? Because that was the only two shows you had. Uh, well, I had an injury after the after the Toronto Pro. Like, I, I dealt with that whole thing, like dehydration and food poisoning. And I was kind of like, I wasn't discouraged because I was like, oh, this is just, I guess, shit happens. You know what I mean? Like, what the mm-hmm. fuck can I do about that? I wasn't too worked up. But then I went to the, um, I was sponsored by Animal at the time. And they invited, and the Olympia was after I had done the Toronto Pro. The Toronto Pro was in like September or something, or August, or late August. And uh, so they're like, oh, do you want to, they come down to the Olympia, like where we want guys, certain guys to do little exhibitions. And like, they had a miniature cage there, not like the one at the Arnold, but they just had like a mini cage. Mm -hmm. So they asked me if I'd do a demo and they wanted me to like, I don't know, as I was like, I'll just do 200 pound dumbbell press because I had done it like a handful of times, right? So I was like, I'll fucking do it. Like that seems like somewhat impressive around these guys are the strongest guys in the world. Like I was like, somewhat to think impressive. Of that was actually going to be uh yeah. Well, that was one of my questions was going to be talk about your feats of strength. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, I'm like, I'm in a cage with these guys who are like pulling like thousand pounds and squatting like free, like Sam bird did like a hands, free fucking like 650 pound squat Jesus Christ. like and i was like i remembered that from the cage at the, at, at the arnold and i was like what am i gonna do to impress people like the fuck am I yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean I, like it's like how do you compete with these guys like i but i, I interviewed them, i interviewed tiny mika um last week yeah yeah oh, and he's, he's, and he yeah he benched 1125 and i'm like how how i remember how? he was the one we were, did a <laughs> we did a competition against gaspari back in the day it was a bench or body weight competition in the cage, like for charity. Mm-hmm. And he was, I, my shoulder was like kind of feeling weird. And I had to bench my weight at the time was three thirty, mm-hmm. So I had to like bench my body weight. And I remember I like made tiny. I was like, you're spotting me. I'm like, no one else is <laughs> like, cause I, I'm like, cause I know if I start to feel something, you can grab, you'll grab that bar and just take it off. I don't want to yeah, like right. be with someone who's, I'm like, and he's like, I got you. And he like literally like gave me a lift off and it was like, he picked up a, like a feather. I was like, Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. You know, most guys are like straining to lift off. Right, you. Just right, like, right, right. Here you go. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Well, did you see when he, when he broke the bench world record last month? No, no. Yes. I, I swear it. to God, you got to see it. He has seven guys spotting him. Yeah. It's crazy. Seven. He's got three on each side and one behind him because That's why it's funny. Cause in a lot of my, in a lot of my like stuff I do on YouTube and Instagram, I talk about powerlifting, how bodybuilders shouldn't be powerlifters, but I don't ever, I never, it's not like I have, I have no animosity towards powerlifting. I have nothing but respect for powerlifting. And that's, that's why my viewpoint is the way it is. Like, don't disrespect those guys and act like you're one of them because you're not. No, and it's not not part of, it's not part of your sport. So stop fucking pretending to be something you're not. And like a whole different world. That's what I mean. Like I don't. I have so much respect for those guys, and I've seen some of the craziest shit I've ever seen was like at Animal Cage, like watching Richard Hawthorne pull like eight hundred pounds at hundred. He's like a buck thirty. Oh, like pull, pulled it like nothing. Yeah, it, they're, uh, they're they're freaks of nature, and the girls too. Oh my god! I mean, yeah. I've ha- I've Steph had Cohen. Steph Cohen. I've had Rita West on, who had the squat world record for I think almost 10 years at 148 pounds, she squatted 675. It just got broken over the summer. I had- That would, would bury me. I had, yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I, yeah, I had uh, Katrina, I forgot, I can't pronounce her last name. She has the bench press world record for a woman. She benched 611. I've had, Leah, I've had Leah Reitman, who has a squat world record um, overall. She benched uh, nine and a quarter. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So yeah, I admire it tremendously. But now your feats of strength, you would work, you would actually rep 200 pound dumbbells. Yeah. I mean, I did it. I, I did it. My bench was always something that was strong for me, like prior to tearing my fucking pec at the Arnold, at the Olympia, but it was just always like a lift that I had a lot of, it's like my, my big lifts were like my, my bench, I could shrug a shit ton and I could like, and like hack squat. I was good, but like okay. regular barbell squatting, I wasn't like, I was, I was okay. Like I could. 
I did decent weights for that. Nothing, nothing like crazily impressive, but like it was just never anything I liked doing. Right. So mm-hmm. but it's funny how my bench, you know, it's funny how yeah, some my people bench. could have something very strong and others, you know, and the same person as the yeah. other movement, not so strong. It's, uh, it's I think a lot of, I think a lot of people nowadays, especially bodybuilders, cause I had this kind of idea ingrained in my head since I was younger with a lot of the people I trained with was like, you have to define like what your lifts are. Mm-hmm. So like there's two or three lifts that you know, you have that you're, you're good at and they could even be obscure. Like me mine are shrugs. Mm-hmm. It's like, you have to use those lifts to expose and to push the strength issue. And then everything else is like, you're going to understand like where your weight kind of needs to be to like stimulate and like be on the muscle. But there's these one or two or three lifts where it's like, I know I can kind of like push the envelope a bit with this. Like, Mm -hmm. I know I can, I know I can spur this, like this muscle growth and this like overall strength coming up through these lifts. It doesn't have to be every fucking lift. man. Right. right, right. And these guys are like, Oh, on my fucking bench dead. Like I, my deadlift is so unimpressive it's like and i don't even remember what my max ever was but it was nowhere near anything impressive and it was just like and i remember like trying i remember when i did it for like the one rep it was like my back my eyes like i I tasted puke in the back of my throat i was like why am i doing this yeah i don't fucking enjoy this like yeah yeah yeah, i'm not getting anything out of this like i could barbell row a good amount like i got high i could probably be pretty high on barbell rows but oh just snap and wait up and down. I'm not right, like, right, 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 right. After three plates, the amount of control you have is like minimal. How could you? How could you possibly have control when the weight in front of you is three times your body weight? Yeah, you know I mean? like yeah, yeah, or yeah. two times your body weight. You're off balance. Which, which makes uh, the Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates uh, bent over was even more impressive. That's <laughs> oh, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So now, so now you decide. Okay, you get injured and you decide you're not going to do bodybuilding anymore do you go right into training or is it uh no i i tore my pec and then i i was like my whole obviously like you're a bodybuilder like the whole goal is to like now i'm on the road to like coming back you know what i mean mm-hmm. like every time we're always like doing these like comeback stories like oh i tore his pec he's coming back and i was like i meant to compete again but then i was also like in a point of, of my life where i've told this to other people like i just was not making money Mm. And I was like almost 30 fucking years old. And it's like, I need to, I need to either put this to the side or I need to figure out some way to make an insane amount of money very fast. Like, am I going to become a fucking Coke dealer or am I going to like (laughs) get a real job? And like, you know what I mean? Like, and those, that wasn't an option. So it's like, I need to go get myself a job or one or two jobs and like really start becoming a fucking adult and stop thinking that like, this big contract is looming in the distance for me right, just because right. I'm a big guy. Like, cause I, I was very realistic with myself. Like I, I didn't, I knew that I was never going to be without a lot of time and effort and a lot of money to the point where I would be on the Olympia stage mm-hmm. and doing well. I mean, maybe I would have got there like one, like some small show or got enough points like nowadays, but it's like, would I, would I be an Olympian? No, mm-hmm. maybe I would get there by fluke. Because like my structure and my frame, like I was a big guy and I had like, I had a good back. I had like good lines for like a tall guy, but like, and my legs came up, but it's like, would my legs ever be Antoine's legs? No. Yeah. Well, how would tall my legs are you? Ever... Six foot, like six oh, one okay. almost. Well, for bodybuilding, that's tall. And what was your, yeah. what was your, the biggest you've ever been though? Off season weight? 330. Wow. That's yeah. You're a big dude. It definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I just it's notable that you understood your limitations. And I think any person who is uh, aware, any person that is, you know, uh, intelligent knows their limitations, but at the same time, you've, you've broken out into this world-class trainer and was that by design or you were just like, I was just fucking good at this. No, I mean, cause I mean, even when I, when I lifted, I always lifted because I enjoyed lifting. Like mm-hmm. I was, and I was very, and my late coach who passed away a while ago, who taught me a lot, his name is Darren Oliver. Me and Darren used to spend a lot of time. Like when I first met him, I was like, man, this guy is the most meticulous like trainer I've ever seen. Like the first, the first sessions I had with him, he was like correcting my like wrist position, like bending my hand back, like, like how to drop like literally two inch movements to understand like the beginning of the pole, maybe on a back exercise. And I was like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I never right. thought that much about what I'm doing. And then, but what he was showing me was like translating into like me feeling things I've never felt. 
Mm -hmm. And like me, me being able to target specific areas that he's like, we're going to hit here and we hit there. Not like, Oh, I think I felt it. Like, no, I'm on here from the minute the the motion starts to it ends. So it's like that had me hooked. Right. So me and him, I had a good sense of like how to feel things for different body parts. And he had a really good sense for other things. So we just kind of came together and I, we kind of fed off each other. I learned a lot from him and I think I helped him learn a little bit of things too, because he was very like methodical and maniacal and a little too slow where I was like, let's fucking go. Like, right, let's right, move, right, right, let's right. move weight. Like yeah. let's, let's get where we need to be, but let's move some fucking weight. Like right. let's be intense about it. Right. So I think that blend of the two kind of caused for like, the physique that I was able to attain when I was with him. Right. So mm-hmm. I was, I was pass on like what I learned from him and stuff that I thought, like I tried different things and we just became like, I just started training people. An ex-girlfriend of mine, I helped her. She trained her for two years. She turned pro in her second show and she, but her genetics were crazy through the roof, but it was just, like, yeah. she also didn't understand how to fucking train and how to move. So it's like, you see this person with all this potential and they're fucking doing meathead shit, like ah, pushing fucking weights three inches on a leg press. And just oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's just like, no, like let's slow you the fuck down. Let's understand full range of motion. Like let's get you to relax in the movement. And then like, let's see this body just fucking blow out. Right. right, right, right. And I noticed that with a lot of people, like I can walk through a gym right now. Like me and you could walk through a gym. I can pick out, everything everyone everything's doing i can tell you why that they're why they're doing that and where like so if this person's like i don't have a good back okay we'll do a pull show me any pulling movement i can tell you instantly why it's wrong Mm. because i can tell you where you're starting from and like what you're doing to bring the weight like all these people like trap neck trap shoulders go into their neck and they're here on every back movement Mm -hmm. they can't ever pull from low ever Mm -hmm. they can't lift their chest because their shoulders are too too forward because mm-hmm. they're locked forward in everything they do, right? So they can't clear shoulder back to lift chest to squeeze back. Now, so was all, were, these, were of, these things that you were you were able to pick up, or are these things that you just have insight on, and you're able to like you just you just kind of pick it up? It's just instinctual. It's just, I mean, it's from from repetition and seeing what my like Darren used to show me, and like understanding it and movement, seeing it in people. But it's almost like I can see the movement. I can see where there's a hitch. So if it's not like a straight line or like a smooth arc, mm-hmm. whatever it is, I can see where like the, the hesitation is or like the speed up. You know what I mean, it's not like there's no fluidity to the movement, mm-hmm. right? And that's because people just aren't maneuvering their bodies in a way to be able to pull straight or to press flat or do anything that allows them to like really sit. Like the weight sits on your body mm-hmm. and locks down in your body as opposed to you holding weight and then bringing it to you and getting it away from you, mm, right? Okay. Well, it seems like to me that you are the, uh, how can I say it? You're the quintessential, and, and this is a compliment. It's going to sound like not a compliment, but it's gonna, I'm going to get there. <laughs> you are the quintessential decent pro who when became a, ma- a trainer became a tremendous trainer, and you see that in a lot of sports. You see that yeah. in, I mean, you see that, I don't know if you follow uh, baseball, but I mean, you know, Joe Torrey, when he was a player, they called him Clueless Joe, and he became one of the greatest baseball managers that ever lived. I mean, Phil, yeah. Jack, Phil Jackson, same kind of thing. Even boxing, I mean, you know, uh, the, the trainers for boxing, were the same uh, Eddie Futch, you go down the line, they were decent pros, but once they put on the training shoes, they were amazing at it. And what's funny yeah. is, what's funny is, when you have the great pros try to train, they never kind of can get there. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the... the- I don't know what the quote. The a lot difference. of the guys who are like great, great pros and like super genetic freaks, they don't like the act, the action of them moving weight just puts muscle on because the body, like anybody can lift any way they want and they right. can like progressively get stronger and their body will develop. Mm-hmm. We all know like complete idiots in the gym who just like do nonsense, but they still have muscle on them. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Absolutely. But there, but there is better pathways and better movements to do to allow the body to develop better mm-hmm. so that we don't get these like, Oh, imbalances of like these high traps or these big shoulders and no back, no chest. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, it goes back to like you saying that and I don't take any offense to it at all. Cause I'm honest with myself. It goes back to like, I knew what my limitations were and I knew I could be as, only as good as I could be based on my structure and how I'm built. Mm-hmm. But I also knew how to hit things because like I was a taller guy. I had to learn where to my foot placement on things to feel my quads more, to get more quad in the movement, to get mm-hmm. more glute in the movement, to understand where outer sweep was. So all this stuff that I carried over 
now that when I put it into like other people who are far more talented than I am, it's just like things just happen. Yeah. And, and just to prove my point again, all the great trainers with the exception of Milos, he's, he's one of them that are, uh, he, he, he doesn't fit that stereotype, but you look at Chris Aceto, George Farah, Dave Pullman, Dave Pullman never even turned pro. I don't think Chris Aceto ever turned pro. Um, you go down the line, uh, uh, John Meadows, God rest his soul. He was a decent pro, but they they were world class trainers, better than anybody. Yeah. And, and um, it seems to me that that's that's those are the footsteps you're following. It seems to me that that's the direction you're headed in, if not there already. Because you're yeah. you're you're. I mean, you said you trained Antoine. You said you trained Regan Quentin. What's Quentin's last name? Uraya. I don't know how to spell Quentin. So I, I think yeah. it's Araya. I'm Araya. Araya. Right and then <laughs> who who else? Who else did you uh, did you train? Uh, out of those guys, I think that's the only, I also trained like a couple guys who are like Cody, lesser known pros. Co- Cody Robin, Montgomery. yeah. No, Cody, Amy is like, uh, he just turned classic pro and then, uh, oh, okay. Rob, okay. Robin Strand, who's also a pro. He's going to make a, I think he'll make a big impression this year when he competes. Cause that kid is just like a ball of muscle. It's wild. Yeah. yeah so, uh, I mean, that's, that's some, um, that's some resume you got there, you know? Uh, so that's saying something now. Just to get a little controversial, Quentin, he was, he was, the, yeah, he was the one that did, what, the last Toronto Pro, right? Yeah. And he came in second, right? Yeah. Okay. He should, have, come, he should have been first, but that's I, fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody, um, I think everybody uh, thinks that. Uh, I, I, I thought so, too. When I saw, now again, I know everybody says you got to be there in person and so on and so forth. I mean, I've only seen it on, on my laptop, but he looked f- incredible. And yeah. at the prejudging, I mean, I wasn't the only one that was saying he's got it. I mean, every other bodybuilding YouTuber was saying he's got it. You know, Nick Strength and Power, Desktop Bodybuilding. They were all going, yeah, he's got it. Nick Trigilli. They were going, yeah, he's got it. And then yeah. that night, and, and that's not uncommon. We saw it at the Arnold Classic this year, too, with, uh, with Ian, uh, Ian Valliere and um, Steve Kuklo. Steve Kuklo, oh, he's got second, he's got second. And then all of a sudden, the night show, and then it's, it's Ian. And everybody's like, what the fuck just happened, you know? Yeah, if I, I mean, if I knew what IFBB judges were thinking, I'd be a fucking, uh, I don't think, think anybody can tell you what those guys are thinking half the fucking time. But it's like, Quinn, like, if, if you're going to make an argument for Joel to win, and there's not, this is not knocking Joel at all. Joel looked great. It's like, if you're going to make an argument, like as to why he won, it was because he was drier. But does that dryness on a less pleasing physique beat a pleasing physique that's fuller and rounder and not as dry? Mm-hmm. In my eyes, no. Right. So but it, like, was, it wasn't. Not, it wasn't like Quentin wasn't dry. No, but that's you the know, thing. Is like that's <laughs> like, there's like there's like a dry there's a dryness level that you and me both know where it's like it's like emaciated dry where it's like it's like it's like a dry dry like there's no sheen on the muscle it's just this like paper like tissue paper skin Mm -hmm. that kind of dryness whereas quentin was more pushed out but but sucked in do you mean like saran wrap looking where like everything was wrapped everything was just wrapped which i would think that which i think that's what you would want which is which, which is which is one fucking olympia's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 yeah look, exactly. that look that look wins Olympias. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. Jay Cutler Jay Cutler was never a fucking dry as a bone, but that's shredded, a, shredded, 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 but he was full as fuck. That's exactly mean right. as shit. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, why are you award what are you awarding? Like you gotta these guys, I don't like that's what I'm saying. Show to show and like and it, there's no consistency in what they're awarding. Yeah. And it's like it's just like every show is its is its own show and like, oh, whatever we think this week is what we're going for. It's like, well, you have to have some type of criteria, guys, or like mm-hmm. no one knows what to strive for. Because mm-hmm. if it's about being dry, then everybody's going to get fucking dry, and let's see who's the driest. Right. If it's right, about right. being full, then let's everyone get full. Let's see how full and dry we can get. Right. right because right. you're you're awarding different things at different weeks, and it's like that's why I tell these guys who compete, and I'm like, just be the best you can be, and don't fucking worry about what these guys think. That's right. That's like right. just that's fucking right. show up and be the best you can be. Look the best you look. Be happy with how you look. And whatever these washed up fucks say, they say, I don't give a shit. Like, no, it, it's true. I mean, listen, we see it all the time. I mean, we saw it recently with Samson Dowda and Rafael Brandao. 
they one 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 show, one show the next week, the next week the other one 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 show, and they really didn't look that much different from week to week, you know. So it, it's it's it you know unless you're going to tell me that well you know Samson won last week, so we're going to give it to Rafael Brandao. But uh, it's also like this this bad thing that's happening. It's perpetuating this this shit in bodybuilding where it's like everyone views that every microscopic detail creates a bit, the massivest change. Mm-hmm. So it's like oh. We weren't as dry last week, so now we're gonna do this and this, and we're gonna come in like two percent better. But it's gonna be like we do this one thing, you're all. Oh, it's like now your physique's great. It's like no, your physique was fucking great last week too. Yeah. yeah. And, and, <laughs> if, and if you walk, if you walked on stage with that physique again, which is entirely possible, don't change what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like and walk on stage again. But like these guys all like back to the drawing board. Like they go to prejudging and then back to the drawing board. Like how many meals? How many this? Like. Am I going to take two D balls between prejudging and fucking like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's just like yeah, ev- it's- to every, for, to think that everything, every little thing matters. And like, it's creating these, like this, like, ner- like I don't even know how to say it. It's creating this like paranoia or this like anxiety in bodybuilding where like every guy's looking for the next edge. Like, Oh, how many carbs? How many, how many rice cakes can I have? Well, mm-hmm. three. Cause if you have four, you'll spill four is too many. Like mm-hmm. it's like, what are we talking about, man? It's like you're either in shape or you're not in shape. Yeah, by that by like, that point, you know, uh, I'm a huge Dave Palumbo fan, and uh, he says when he guy has guys backstage, he basically doesn't let them. You know, the work is done. You know, yeah, if, if you're going to worry about what you have to eat if backstage, you're to, yeah. If you're going to try and if you think that like having a fucking teaspoon of honey or whatever <laughs> the gonna fuck it is, things, is, yeah. is gonna is gonna make you better than the next guy. Well, my veins are out more. It's like no man. Like, yeah. So, uh, did you see um, uh, the nationals? Did you watch the NPC nationals? No, I I didn't see a lot of the pictures. I saw Carlos because I I trained Carlos when he came up to Toronto just for because he's a part of HD Muscle like I am. Oh so wow! I, I didn't know that. I had okay. I, I had the pleasure of training with him on a doing a back day with him. So he's a super nice guy. So I was really rooting for him. I was glad he won. Yeah, he he is. Uh, uh, he's got a lot of potential. Um, oh, he's special. He's special, man. Yeah, That's special he's got right a there. lot of, and he wasn't even chiseled. His, his shape and his size was was what I mean. He was in shape. Don't get me wrong, you know, but you could see he could have been a little little drier. But his shape and his size is going to take him far, man. He's he's tremendous. Did you see just to get on like a, a lighter a lighter conversation? Did you see that one guy that made it to the nationals and he didn't look like a bodybuilder? Said, yeah, they said he was trolling everyone or whatever. But how did he make it on? Dude. But yeah, but how did he make it on stage if he was trolling? Because he you? qualified. How? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's that's a question for whatever organization or whatever local show let that slide. But yeah, I mean, I all the power to him if he if he's happy if he's happy with the way he looks. I understand like how everyone's kind of taking offense to it because it's like, well, we worked this hard. Well, it's obvious that he's not supposed to be there, guys. Yeah, it's I not mean, like it's, he. It's not like he. It's not like he beat anyone he wasn't supposed to beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just let him show up, and like, there's always someone like that at every show. Yeah, there's always usually, someone that does that. Yeah, yeah usually it's the uh, it's the it's the local shows, you know, yeah. somebody show. But the national level shows. See, there's a. You know, I think what a lot of people don't understand, and you'll understand, there's a big difference like uh, winning a show in New York City, a lo- you know, a New York City Bev Francis show. Yeah. Go on to the Nationals as opposed to winning some show in like, you know, Oklahoma. Right. Yeah, yeah. It is a big, well, big that's difference. That's probably where he came from. <laughs> yeah. There's a big, big difference. Like if you, if you win, to, you know, if you win the to Atlantic- knock Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you win the Atlantic States... Oh, you know, you know, or the yeah. Easterns or the Eastern USA. It's like you're pretty much, it is pretty much written. It's not like you're ready for a national level stage. I mean, that's, that's what yeah. I mean, you know, um, and there's always like, there's a flip side to that though. Cause it's like everybody and everyone will probably shit on me for this, but like everybody's on their own journey and everybody's like chasing what they're chasing. Right. And not all of us are going to be pros or not top national level guys. Like for all everyone knows that that could have been the highlight of that dude's life. That yeah, he, right, that he right, right. that he won it, that he qualified for nationals, and he's like, I'm, he's not going there, being like, yeah, I fucking. It's just for him, probably just being on stage is enough, man. Yeah, it's just like that's like a personal fucking win for him, and everybody's kind of smashing on him. But at the same time, it's like, why do you care so much? Like, it's yeah. obvious that it's like he's there because he he obviously got there because he qualified to get there somehow. But right. There's a, there's probably an issue with that somewhere. 
Like maybe he was the only person in this category. I was thinking, right, exactly, right, right, right. So it's like, it's not his fault, man. Like he's just following the rules. He's That's not doing it. Anything, not hurting anybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Plus, um, you know, who knows? Who knows, you know, what he thinks or what he's doing? Who, who, who really knows, you know? Nobody had a, a conversation with him or an interview, which would be interesting, actually, if somebody did interview them. But not actually, not troll him, but a serious interview. That would be pretty no, interesting. I guarantee, I guarantee you it's a lot more wholesome and a lot more genuine than people think. Like, absolutely. I don't know why I ever, think so, just because that, Just because bodybuilding world's full of trolls and all you fucking trolls out there know your trolls yeah. doesn't mean he's – doesn't. <laughs> Doesn't mean he's one, man. Like no, because I remember I just, did I did a uh, a small show. It was a local show. It was uh, what show was it? Oh God, it was a show in Jersey down the Jersey Shore. I don't remember. Um, and there was a guy in my weight class. He was I was I was no, he was the weight class behind me, and he kind of resembled that that guy. You know, he was kind of not in shape. And I sp- spoke to him backstage. And once I spoke to him, I said to myself, Ah, okay, I, I get it. Now. He's just not. You know, not not dealing with a full deck. I got it. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure there's instances of that, but I mean, yeah. a lot of like I see it a, like a lot of lo- a lot of local shows. One of the things that I noticed when I was competing a lot, like at local shows and stuff, was like there was always those handful of people who like maybe they were on like the, it was the end of like a massive like weight loss journey. Or that like happens a, a lot, yes. Or a, or a massive like massive body transformation where it's yeah. like I was. I was I was obese before. I've lost two hundred pounds. I just yes. want to get up there and show that I can do yeah. this. And it's like you should support those people, man. Yeah, like they're, they're not like, fucking hurting anybody. No, they're absolutely not. not. If anybody. anything, they're putting they're putting money in the in the promoters' pockets. It's, that happens a lot with the girls. I see that a lot with the girls. You know, they do bikini yeah. or figure or something like that. And you're right. You know, more power, more power to them. I think it was just because it was a national level show, and everybody was scratching their head, going, "I don't, you know, it's supposed to be the best damage. How the fuck did he?" But guaranteed, <laughs> yeah. like you said, guaranteed, there's probably nobody in his class who was national qualified. There's probably nobody in his class. You know, yeah. it was probably a especially super- with the yeah. especially with the years that we've been having lately, where it's COVID. Like you have to understand, like the level of competition, yes. and some of these shows are canceled, and some of these, like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Like some shows are just like not people aren't competing. Or yeah. like the people, the turnout's not happening, right? So it's like, and this was this whatever. this national this this nationals. I was very happy to see some quality. I was like, well, wow, because you're right. In the last couple of years, it's been kind of shitty, as far as mm-hmm. I was actually the you know I was obviously paying attention to both the super heavyweights because Carlos was in there, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm actually after you. I'm actually interviewing one of the other guys who broke the top uh, six in the super heavyweights, um, Danny. I forget his last name. Um, Who's the guy who won the heavyweight? Oh, you know, I'd have to look it up. I'm not 100 percent sure, man. I think but, it was like him that he looked amazing too. I yeah, yeah, name, yeah, but. yeah. He there, there's some there was quality this time around. I haven't seen that kind of quality in a, in a few years, and I'm, I was glad. I'm, glad, to see I'm it. glad those. I'm glad neither of those guys were at my nationals because I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about. It. No, that happened. Well, before uh, funny story, and then I'll let you go. Um, that happened to me. Remember, I told you about from you know uh, state to state. I mean, even as close as Jersey to New York City. Um, I did a couple of Jersey shows and I, every, every masters I would win the overall. And then I came in second in the open. And then I was like, Oh, you know, the next year I was like, Oh, feeling myself. I was, I'm going to go do a show in New York city. Of course I got my ass handed to me. Right. Cause <laughs> I, yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, um, Oh, uh, I'll do a show in New York city. I'll qualify. And then I'll do the, um, what's the, uh, the show in New York, the national, qual- the, uh, national level show in New York, uh, team universe. Mm-hmm. And I'll do Team Universe, you know, because I was feeling myself because the year before I was doing pretty good. So I get my mm-hmm. ass handed to me at the, it was the Brooklyn Grand Prix, right? I get my, my ass handed to me, right? Except for the Masters because there was nobody there. <laughs> I, get my, I get my ass handed to me. And I'm like, you know, my plan was, you know, and then go into Team U the next year, the following year. So I didn't, obviously didn't, that didn't pan out. So, but I go to Team Universe to, just to check it out. And uh, mm-hmm. John Meadows winds up on a team universe. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> just fucking not happening, dude. There's no way in hell. That was my reality. I'm like, there is no way in hell I'm looking like that. <laughs> John, I never met John in person, but like fucking the, green, the graininess and the hardness oh, of that guy. He like, was old school, old school. You could Christ, see that. Man. Yeah. And the wealth of knowledge he had, I mean, and he, as a trainer, he just kind of, like yourself, kind of just, Blew up on the map, like just right yeah. at, right after his uh, pro- professional bodybuilding career was over. I mean, he was just as a trainer, he was you know he was he was up there. He was getting up there with you know the Acidos and the Faras and you know the the um, the uh, Charles Glasses. He was up there. He was training great guys, and then all of a sudden, 
you know, fucking shit happens, man. It sucks, but what are you going to do? I think a lot of the guys that really resonate with, with other athletes are the ones that like have one have been in their shoes and two, like have a different perspective on it. Right. Where it's mm-hmm. like, like, cause I, I don't see John, I didn't know him at all, but I know people who worked with him. I don't, I don't think this guy was like neurotic and like freaking out and like, you know what I mean? Like getting people in this frenzied state where like, you got to do this guy. This seemed like very laid back. Like yeah, he did. He did. You know, I've, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I saw it's a couple like, of cause videos. It's, cause it's like, it's not that fucking serious guys. Yeah. Like, it's really not. And it's yeah. like, and like, and the more stressed you are, like everyone who bodybuilding should know this because we're all apparently health experts. The more stressed you are, the worse your body responds. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're around someone who is as maniacal as you are, or as neurotic as you are, and like every detail, weigh your rice, weigh your rice to the to the exact milligram, and like it's like, take it easy, man. Like yeah. it's just <laughs> yeah. it's eating it's eating food, doing juice and working out. That's it. Like it's, it's really, fucking awesome. It is not make, a stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a stressful yeah. sport. You're not yeah. gonna walk in the ring and get your fucking knock, head block knocked off by some heavyweight boxer. Right. You're not going to go get choked out in the UFC. You're not going right. to be like on the football field getting ear holed by people. It's very relaxed, man. And yeah. like that's why you see the guys who are the best are the calmest. Yeah. Um, uh, like, oh, uh, oh, God. He just retired. Perfect example. Oh, Jesus. Dexter Jackson. Yeah. Dexter Jackson didn't was. Give a fuck. Oh, yeah, he really did. <laughs> I mean, even like, the way was just another, even the way he walked day, on stage, man. even the way he walked out on stage, you could tell he didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Look at Ronnie. Look at Ronnie. Oh yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, he wasn't you know, stressed. He wasn't stressed out. He wasn't fucking freaking out about how much, how much ketchup he put on his fish earlier. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. or like, he was a oh, full-time do I get, cop. Do, do I get my chocolate chip cookie as my cheat? You yeah, know I mean, he doesn't. Right, it was right. just like I'm in shape, man. I were I train my ass off. I'm in shape. Whatever happens, happens. I'm That's just right, here to have right. fun. Right, right. And more right. guys need to adopt that, man. Like yeah, more guys so. need to just like take a fucking deep breath and like yeah. just work hard, diet hard, do your cardio, and you will get in shape. Like oh no question. There's no magic potion. Yeah. Mike, is there anything you want to is there anything you want to plug before before you get going? Not that I have a huge audience, but whatever helps helps. No, just anyone who wants to reach out to me, I'm on Big Mike Van Wick on Instagram and on YouTube. My channel is Wicked Training, so I try to pump out videos on there and provide content that kind of help people with issues I see, like issues I see people having in the gym or stuff that I've had problems with or little tips that I think could help most people. So. I'm always open to suggestions. If you guys want to watch a video, leave a comment, stuff you want to see. I'm, I'm always looking for stuff. So. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that your Instagram and your YouTube channel is in the description so people could find it quick and easy and they'll click for on sure. it and that's it. And I am going to wait till after the new year to release this. All my, uh, okay. I have a whole bunch of content. It's really good people. You, Tiny Meeker, I had my first stand-up comic because I'm trying to make my channel like general interviews not just yeah, yeah. you know and then all that stuff is going to be released after the new year and uh well hopefully uh hopefully 2022 will be a hell of a lot better than the last two yeah. years <laughs> <laughs> mike all brother right, thank you very much i appreciate it we'll be in touch thank you all right i appreciate it all right have a good night thanks man